happening? It's the rapture, Shauna. The rapture. The virtuous have gone to heaven, and the rest of us have been left below. <gasps> left below? Where have I heard that before? It's the title of the movie. We were fools. And because we rejected God, tacitly accepting Satan, we must suffer through the apocalypse. <laughs> Why did I choose to be gay? Oh, this movie will haunt me for the rest of my life. March, what if the rapture is coming and I haven't led a good enough life? I could be left below. God wouldn't spring the rapture on us unannounced. He'd send us signs. March is right. The rapture isn't coming. There haven't been any ominous signs. The book of Revelations has 404 verses. Add the number of people at the Last Supper. Minus the number of Filipinos in the Bible. And you get... 3,100,000... p.m. May 18th. The world will end next week! Spend your children's college fund! Thaw that turkey now! It's the end of the world! God loves you! He's gonna kill you! Uh, oh, here's one. Revelation 6.13. Just before the rapture, the stars will fall to the earth. All you hippies out there might want to... For that one. <laughs> there you have it, folks. <gasps> the stars are falling to the earth. <gasps> just as you predicted. Okay, guys, get ready. We're just seconds away. <laughs> Six, five... Four. I'm so proud of you, homie. Two, one! Goodbye, stupid Earth! Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Tonight, Gotham's relying on one man to save us Wait all. for it. Wait for it. Ha ha! Life goes on. Hey, Nostra dumbass. Did the rapture come? I can't recall. Oh, in fact, I can recall, and it didn't, and you suck. Hey, fat wad, here's another thing you didn't predict. <coughs> hey, there's that jerk who tried to save us. No, it's rapture, Einstein. But my prediction said you couldn't predict six o'clock at five thirty. Three, two, one. Woohoo! I was right. The stairs to earth so beautiful with your many rings. Okay, let's see. Earth is channel twenty-three, I think. Shalom, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. All right, this video is going to be entitled, What is the Rapture? What is the Rapture? Okay. Now, normally I go into this video and I will say the Rapture is a false doctrine. 
and just bear with me here we'll make sure i'm recording so i normally would go into the video and say that the rapture is a false doctrine so as i was uh saying <clears throat> normally i would go into a video and 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 bring out or i would title the video the rapture is a false doctrine okay which it is a false doctrine but first let's understand what exactly people mean when they talk about the rapture so when you read the scriptures, there's a time when the Savior comes back, which is the end of the world, okay? And uh, the elect will be saved, right? Now today, people interpret that as the believers or these, these beings are going to be saved. No, the only people that's going to be saved are taken up with the Lord. Number one, they're all Israelites, okay? And that's the only ones the Lord is going to beam up or save. Now, before I go too far into that, I want to just mention this video right here on the screen. You saw it in the opening. This, this uh, Jake, the return of the Messiah is now don't miss the rapture, which he going off, okay? There's not going to be an announcement made. The Savior's here. Let's go meet him. Or, you know, none of that. It's going to just, it's going to happen. It's, it's a very specific way in which that's going to happen. And it's not going to be, uh, you know, some weird nigga on TikTok is making a video with these damn AI graphics or whatever that is, CGI technology, I don't know. I don't know exactly what that is, but it, I mean, it's awesome. And I also put in this too, a, a clip from a video of the Simpsons going into the whole thing with the rapture now. So get back into it, what is the rapture? So there is a, a taking up, there is a salvation in which those that have been chosen or called up to be with the Lord, there is a such thing as that. But it's not called a rapture, okay? Now, the rapture in itself is a false doctrine. So let me say it again. The salvation is correct. The people will. The second coming of the Lord is true. He will come back, which his name is Yahweh Shai, okay? His name is Yahweh Shai. Not Jesus, not Christ, not the rest of that. No, it's Yahweh Shai. That's his only name. If you say anything other than that, you're wrong. You are wrong, period. And you're going to have to agree with what we say. All right, at the end of the day, you're not of the elect anyway. If, if the Lord didn't give you his real name, that means you're not of the elect unless you learn it later on, right? But if you're walking around now calling on another name, you're not, you're in, you're in error. We're the prophets. The Lord sent us to teach you, not the other way around. Anyway, you know, I put in a little, you know, a little cartoon here of the Simpsons. You know, he's, uh, Homer's reading from, you know, right, reading from the Bible and all of that. And then, like I said, you got this other guy going on and on about this rapture right so when people talk about the rapture what they mean is the word rapture don't don't listen to what i'm saying and then get mad and say i'm lying oh it's in the bible that me people gonna be taken i know it's in the bible that people gonna be taken up but it's not called a rapture and when you use the word rapture what you're talking about is a doctrine that the world believes in and it goes like this the savior gonna come he gonna save some people right like they, the rapture is when people disappear. They vanish out of their clothes in the thin air. Nobody knows where they went, right? These are supposed to be the, the Christians or the followers of the Lord or whatever they call themselves. They're supposed to be the ones going to be taken out of the way so they don't have to suffer. They don't have to go through any, they don't have to go through the tribulation as they call it, right? And they're going to vanish out of their clothes and the plane's going to crash and nobody's going to know where these believers are. And then our families and relatives are going to find find out that certain of their relatives vanished oh no friend he did he vanished the lord came and we missed it that's what the rapture is when you when people get snatched away nobody knows where they are they would they also went with the lord and then the rest of the world still going on like you know like like never before or like uh, uh it's always been going on that's a false doctrine okay now let me let's go to it and prove that because the scripture tell us that when the lord comes that's the end right there it's not going to be any more after that, okay? People ain't going to be going on with their normal life. Matthew 24 and around about 29. We're going to go right to the point. Because that, like I said, that rapture doctrine is false. So this is Matthew 24 verse 29. And, uh, and then one of the main tenets of the rapture doctrine is that the believers, they get raptured out of here so that they don't have to suffer the wrath of the Antichrist and the tribulation that the Lord's going to bring on the earth. When you're reading the scriptures, it doesn't say that. This is Matthew 24, verse 29. Listen. It says, The glorious return 
immediately after the tribulation of those days you notice the phrasing immediately after the tribulation so this is the tribulation is going to happen which we which is jacob's trouble for the 12 tribes of israel and tribulation for the rest of the earth okay immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun and moon be darkened i'm sorry shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken you notice the time frame immediately after the tribulation so everybody's going to go through it this doesn't happen to after the tribulation and then shall the shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven now this guy showed us something that will be a sign but it's going to be maybe similar but very different at the same time it's going to be something miraculous that happens and really the sign of the son of man in heaven is the chariots you people call ufos okay and the scriptures tell us in revelation one every eye is going to see him because it's going to be an all-out invasion that's what's going to happen so it says and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory see so everybody's going to see the saving let's get the, let's get the precept revelation one the first point is that this is after the tribulation the lord is going to come he's going to end the tribulation nobody leaves and is saved before that revelation 1 and verse 7 it says behold he cometh with clouds see so the trip the rapture doctrine says that the savior ain't gonna come he's just gonna call and then people are gonna vanish and go up into heaven or however they're gonna do it but this says he's going to come now somebody's gonna try to say well no see you you read it wrong there's another verse that says he's going to know there's no verses that say he's going to come before and then he's going to come again later no there's no verse he only comes one time and that's the end of the world behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen you see so everybody on the planet is going to know when this event happens it's not going to be a secret why because the, the chariots which are the so-called UFOs are gonna fill up the whole skies. It's not gonna be a, you know, it's not gonna be a secret. Okay, there's no secret rapture. There's no stealing or, you know, secretly coming in and taking the taking the believers. No. And when you read the precept, Mark 13 and 24, it says this. But in those days after that tribulation, see, so the tribulation has to come, and then the Lord is going to end it. He's gonna end it. Now he is gonna cut it short right he's gonna cut he's gonna cut the days short now the christians have a doctrine where they say that it's supposed to be seven years tribulation and the lord's gonna cut it to three and a half that ain't in the bible they misinterpret a scripture out of daniel that's already came to pass anyway okay the lord did say he's gonna shorten the days but that just means he's not gonna stretch out the length of time because there will no flesh be saved so when the tribulation comes or, the, or jacob's trouble we don't know exactly how long that's going to be, but the Lord is going to end it and then he, when he comes. So it says, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then, when? After that tribulation. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect, which are the chosen, the ones that are going to be saved, the one group, one time. He shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. So the Savior comes one time. You see? One time, one time. And that time is after the tribulation. Now back in Matthew 24 and 22 again. I'm sorry. And let's start at 21 it says for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so let me give you a quick another quick rundown so we know that for the elect's sake the lord is going to shorten the days right now the rapture doctrine says that Three and a half uh, that the that the, the believers gonna disappear, they're gonna vanish, 
unexpectedly unknown to everybody else then the world gonna still be going on like normal right and you're gonna wonder what's going on and during that time you'll be able to repent if you haven't repented already right and then the lord has saved the other half of the believers when he comes that's not in the bible we just read it the lord coming one time now it says for the for the elect's sake he's going to shorten the days why does he need to shorten the days for the elect's sake but the elect is not even going to be here you see and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the anointed, or there, believe it not. So when a nigga comes on the video and tell you the return of the Messiah is now, right? Well, it ain't now. If somebody come and say, well, we met the Lord here in the desert waiting for us. Or we going to pack up bags and we going go to go to the Holy Land. Then the Lord will come meet us. They going off. He's going to come himself and he's going to save it. That's why his name is the Savior. If you're going to save yourself, why do you need a Savior? So all these bug outs popping up in the last days, you know, don't believe them. And even when you see these, they push these, uh, these doctors on these cartoons and shows and different stuff. There's a whole movie um, series called Left Behind. And the whole thing revolves around the rapture coming and then people that, that, halfway believing the Lord are left behind and they got to contend with the Antichrist and the plagues going on on the earth. There ain't no such doctrine as the left behind doctrine. When the Lord comes and he takes up the elect, all those that don't make it, you're going to be destroyed. You see? We talk about in America, Babylon, the great. If you don't get beamed up when the Lord comes back, you're going to die because the nuclear destruction is going to hit Babylon, the great via Armageddon, okay? Let's keep reading. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the anointed of there, believe it not. For there shall fall, Salakia, for there shall arise false anointed and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So you're going to have all kinds of doctrines and people saying they were sent by the Lord and they're going to deceive a lot of people. Now it goes on, behold, I have told you before, wherefore they shall, if, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. It's a secret rapture. He snatched people away. Believe it not. Right? Let's read it again. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Why? For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. It's telling you right there. If people tell you it's going to be a secret or that as this happens or that or that the Lord comes at another time don't believe it it says for the as the lightning coming out of the east and shining even unto the west so shall also the coming of the son of man be so the same way you see the lightning light up the whole sky even at night and the lightning flash you can see in the daytime it's going to be a miraculous event just like that when the Lord comes you're going to see all the ships come the whole sky going to light up everybody going to be gnawing their teeth right the ones that's going to go with the Lord, the elect, the chosen, which are the Israelites only. And the only, not all Israelites, but certain of the Israelites. And we can even prove that. Those are the ones going with the Lord. Everybody else is going to be in utter fear, dread, and terror. And that's it. Okay? So he only comes one time. And we, we've already proven that. Now, now, verse 28, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Which is a metaphor for what? Wherever you see the ships... That's where you're going to see the elect being gathered. It goes on immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the son of man, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven, which are the chariots, the spaceships, and then shall all the tribes of the earth born. They're going to mourn when they see the whole sky fill up with spaceships. And then people that are going to know that's the Lord returning. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So the ships are going to come and they're going to beam up the elect from all over the earth. Now who is this elect right here? Well let's go to Isaiah 45 verse 3. It says... And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. 
for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Did you hear it? Who's the elect? Israel. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So according to this, only Israel, Israel is the only one that's of that elect. Isaiah 65 now, verse 9. And it says, and I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. See that? A seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountain, which mountain means government. And mine elect, my chosen, shall inherit it and my servant shall dwell there. So only Jacob is ever called the elect. We got one more here. First Peter, I believe it is two and nine. Because I know you got people. What about, what about the New Testament? Well, here it is. This is first Peter two. Just bear with me here. Uh... Is this what I want? Just hold on here. Elect. I might be in the wrong chapter. Let's see. First Peter. First Peter 2 and 6. There it is. It says, verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. That's Israelites. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the most high by Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold I lay in Zion, Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. See, which really is going in Yahweh Shah. But you know there's all that's talking about Israelites. Now verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of the most high which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy who is this talking about it goes back to Deuteronomy 32 I don't know exactly what verse but let's find it Deuteronomy 32 and Salakia. Yeah. Deuteronomy 32 and we'll start at 20. Which really this whole thing is to the Israelites. If you read verse 15, it says, But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art also waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the most high which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. So who is Jeshurun? That's another name for Israel. Let's see here if we can get it. Translation. NLT. But Israel soon became fat and unruly. The people grew heavy, plump, and stuffed. Then they abandoned the God who had made them. They made light of the rock of their salvation. So this is talking about the Israelites. So when you read it further down, in verse 21 it says they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the most high they have provoked me to anger with their vanities and i will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people i'll provoke them to anger with a foolish nation so who are them that were not a people it's talking about the gentiles or israelite foreigners it's right here those that were not a people right first peter 2 and 9 again but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people. You can't attribute that to nobody else because there's an old teaching from the old school where they say them that were not a people talking about the Edomites or some other group. No, it's talking about the, the, the uh, Gentiles which pertain to salvation, which are Israelite foreigners. The Romans, right? The, the Greeks, the uh, Philippians, the Corinthians, you see? The Thessalonians, the Americans, the British, the Spanish, all those, the ones that scattered all over the earth with them different names. It's talking about you, you Israelites, and you may be citizens from other countries, but you are Israelites, okay? That's who you are. It ain't talking about the Gentiles who were born in other, that are from another nation of people. Like you a so-called white man, you an Edomite. It ain't talking about you. Okay, the Gentiles are Israelites, Israelite foreigners. 
which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of the Most High, which had not obtained mercy, but have, but now have obtained mercy. There you go. So that saving and taking up is only for the Israelites. It ain't for no other group of people. Ain't nobody gonna be in the chariots when they come. So let's go. Let's make a. Let's go back. So we were talking about the rapture. So the rapture is a false doctrine for many reasons. Number one, the law is not gonna be a secret. Number two. He's only the savior's only coming back one time. Number three, he ain't coming for all people of the earth. He's coming for the elect, which are scattered all over the earth. That's what it means. When he gathers them from all over the earth. Now, let's just get a few scriptures here to prove that. That uh the Lord is only coming to one time. First Thessalonians 4. Right? So again, there is a salvation, but there's only it's only one time. It's not a, that's not a secret. Those who died in the anointed. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I will have you not to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh will the Most High bring with them. Who are those that sleep in Yahweh These are the elect from all times that perished you know believing in the Lord they're going to be brought back they're going to be reincarnated see regenerated reincarnated the spirit going to come back then they're going to be re what regenerated they're going to get new bodies for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep those of us that are alive now we're not going to stop those that passed on already from also getting this same inheritance for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. See, the Lord himself, he's going to come down out of the heavens, right, with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the Most High and the dead and the anointed shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now the clouds are what? The Lord maker the clouds is cherished. They're going to be beamed up into the spaceships. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So it's one time. It's straightforward, right? First, the dead and the anointed, they're going to rise at the second coming, though. Then we which are alive and remain, we're going to be beamed up, too. We're going up together at the same time, right? In the same fashion 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 there ain't no there ain't no two times that the Lord come that's proving that the doctrine the rapture is a false doctrine 1 Corinthians 15 50 now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the most high what's that talking about we cannot inherit the kingdom with these bodies see we got to be changed into immortals because the kingdom of heaven is for immortals Sure, there are going to be mortal beings present in the kingdom of heaven that are not Israelites. All the other nations are going to be regular mortals. They're going to live. They're going to die. They're going to come back. They're going to live and they're going to die. They're going to do that over and over in our kingdom. But we will never die. The Israelites will never die. That's part of the inheritance that we gain from our Lord dying on the cross. So all you Old Testament only niggas who don't believe in the Savior, then you saying, how can you become immortal then? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither the corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. Right, all the Israelites, you know, are not going to perish, but all of us going to be changed. Every Israelite going to be changed. Whether it's you die on this side first and you reborn in the kingdom, you're going to come back as immortal. But if you stay on when the Lord, when the Lord comes, he's going to give us a new body. We're going to all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. That's also proving that the rapture is a false doctrine. The Lord is coming at the last trump and he's going to raise the dead and he's also going to save the elect at the same or the rest of the elect. He's going to beam them up at the same time. There's no other time. It's only going to happen once for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality 
So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now I want to go and read you a scripture. Rest from... Let's bring that one up. Bear with me here. And I'm actually having to run an errand today. Have actually having the car serviced. So while I'm waiting, I'm filming this video, which has worked out perfectly. So this is Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. I start at 12. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments and the faith of Yahweh Shai. Don't listen to the false anti-Christians talking about you don't got to keep the law. You still got to keep the law, okay? So you got to have the law and the faith of Yahweh Shai. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So if you die in the Lord, your position is safe, you know, if you are of the elect, no matter what happens. So we know there are going to be certain brothers that are going to be put to death, certain sisters that may get caught up in the, you know, when the Jacob's trouble come. But you're going to be all right. You're going to come back. So continuing on, I want to also read <clears throat> pertaining to the new body. Right. Let's get uh, Philippians. Chapter three. I think it is Philippians three. So you, you can hear by now that I'm back in the house. Got that Aaron ran and out of the way. This is uh, Philippians three seventeen. Brethren, be followed together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping. That they are the enemies of the cross of the anointed. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. And whose glory is in their shame. Who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior. The Lord. Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Who shall change our vile body. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue. All things unto himself. Okay. So the Lord is going to change his elect, right? And later on, all Israelites will be changed into this new body. You're going to be immortals. All of our people, first the elect, you know, those that died in the Lord, and then those that are alive and remain, they're going to be changed, called up into the chariots and changed, and you will never even die. Then you're going to have all the Israelites that perish from all time. They're going to be reborn in the kingdom of heaven, and they're going to be immortals, all right? Now, there's a couple of things I want to get. Let's first get, if I can here, let's bring up 1611, right there, KJV. If we can, KJV. And let's go to Day of Doom, if we can. So this is going to be Second Ezra, chapter seven, I believe it is. Is it seven? And let's read Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse forty-two. Excuse me. It says, "He answered me and said, This present life is not the end, where much glory doth abide.' Right. This present life is not the end, where much glory doth abide. Therefore, have they prayed for the weak, but the day of doom." The day of doom is the day that Babylon the Great is destroyed, the nuclear destruction, the end of the world. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come. See, that's the first day of immortality. The, the last day of Babylon the Great is the first day of immortality, wherein corruption is past and temperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory. So you can't stop the elect from being saved. There's another scripture I wanted to get doggone it. Yeah. Oh, let's go to 2nd Ezra chapter 6. 
You won't be able to stop the elect from being saved. Okay? You won't be able to oppress us any longer. That's going. That's that. So this is 2nd Ezra chapter 6. And we'll start at verse 23. It says, And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall suddenly be afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And the earth shall stand in, in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Which what? Going into the famine of the word. You're going to have all out chaos, anarchy, right? Um, Jacob's trouble is going to be in full effect. And the famine of the word will have set in. Verse 25 says, Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. That is the elect that's going to see it. That's going to be those that remain. Right? Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape. And see my salvation in the end of your world. And the men that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth. That's the elect. Those that were, were born who have never even died, right? And you're going to have that in our time. Many of us that, that were born in whatever years we were born, we lived on and we've seen the end of, of the world and the coming of the Lord. They're never even going to die. Whatever that, whatever, whoever they are. I could be one of them. You could be one of them out there that's listening. If we're of the elect, we will never even, and, and well, I say it like this. If we're of the elect and the Lord comes back during our time, that during our life, that means we never even died. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth, and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. You see, so there's going to be, there's people that are alive right now that would never even die. Now, real briefly, before we end the video, another thing proving that the rapture doctrine is false is the, uh, the, the uh, persecution of the saints that's going to come. All right, that's during Jacob's trouble. The persecution of the saints is going to happen. And that needs to happen to what? To try the elect. Revelation 2 verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. See? And this devil is talking about is Esau, even the so-called white man. He's going to cast certain of us into prison. There's going to be FEMA camps, concentration camps, whatever you call them. Death camps, internment camps. That's the prison that's spoken of here. That's an end time prophecy specific to what to Jacob's trouble in the end of the world now it happened to some of the some of the uh, elect already apostle Paul Peter them a lot of them was locked into prison John the Revelator when he wrote this he was on the Isle of Patmos banished to the salt mines which is a form of prison fear none of those things but thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried it's for a trial of your faith and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. See? So we got to be faithful unto death. And the persecution of the elect is paramount. You must be tried. This shows you that there's, gonna, there's not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. Revelation 3 and 10. Because I has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. See, so the trials have to come. Our, our faith has to be tested. The Lord is going to try every man. Okay? He's going to try us all. If we read this from the, from the NLT, because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. And it, and it means literally who belong to this world, who live, who's alive. It don't mean those that are worldly because the elect going to be tried too. NIV says, since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Right. Are you an inhabitant of the earth? The answer is yes. So you don't get to vanish and out of here and get away unscathed. Okay. 
There's not going to be a secret stealing or snatching away of the elect before the tribulation. No, you got to go through it. You got to go through it. So this hour of temptation is spoken of here is the time when the mark of the beast is going to be offered, made mandatory, and the elect is going to have to endure. You got to just, hey, don't accept it and just endure. But I think that's a good place to stop because there is going to be a persecution of the saints, as we talked about. But as far as a pre-tribulation rapture, that's false. The rapture doctrine in itself is false. There's a salvation, but there's not a uh, there's uh, not a rapture. Okay, there is a salvation, a taking up of the elect, but it's not called a rapture. So this guy right here was going off. I mean, beautiful thing to look at, but it's just it's just uh, something somebody made up, man. Obviously, all right. We will see you again soon. With another video, Lord willing, this has been What is the Rapture? All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.